Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today I'm going to tie, uh, this is going to be a quill bodied flimp. The hook that I have in a vise, this is a dry fly hook, this is a number 10. I'm making it on this 10 just for a demonstration. But you could make them from this big, from 10 to uh, 20s really. But uh, probably from 14, 16, and 18 would be your best bet. The other materials I'm going to use, I'm going to use a stripped peacock hurl. And in order to strip that, all you do is you just get an eraser and you go against the grain. The butt is down here. There's still a couple there, but I'm not going to even get into that part. The butt is here, so you go from the tip down with a pencil eraser or something that's rubbery, like this soft piece of rubber right here. And I'm going to use microfibits for the tail. You can use uh, other other things for the tail. You can use wood duck flank for the tail. You can use hackle uh, hackle barbels for the tail. And the top or the hackle, I'm going to use a. This is a natural or a gray, light gray. CDC and I'm going to use a gray thread and we're going to start by putting a base of thread on there and we're going to put the tail on first and we're also going to put a thorax on here and the thorax could be just about any kind or color dubbing that you want to use that would match the hatch that you're going for but I'm going to, I haven't really decided yet what color, probably something that's going to match, this is a large hook, I'll probably match something that's in the, uh, like a March Brown color, they're big. So I'm going to take about a decent amount of the, of the micro fibbits. And microfibits are just paintbrush. But when you get them, make sure that you get them the polyester ones. These are basically artist paintbrushes. See how the, the tips are come out to a nice points and stuff. You don't want them. You want you don't want the real cheap ones, but you get a cheap one that looks like that. And we're going to we're going to make that tail about the length of the hook shank. And I'm going to hold them to my side a bit, get that first loose loop, and then tighten it down. And then I could go ahead and wrap forward. Now, because I'm going to use a peacock hurl for the abdomen or half the body, I'm going to want to keep these wraps pretty tight and we're going to trim that off about two eye lengths from the eye of the hook and then I'm going to come back you don't want any big bumps in there or you know you don't want any big gaps in there get to the tail here we could go underneath the tail that's going to hold that tail straight. You can also, what you can also do, especially on these large ones, is you can make a tapered body with the thread. I'm just going to do the abdomen section about there. And then I'm going to come back. And I'm not going to go all the way. I'm going to come forward. This is going to make a little bit of a taper on it. And then come back. And don't go all the way to the, again and then come forward basically you built a taper there and then I'm going to bring that thread right back to the tail again 
Now I'm going to take my peacock hurl and I'm going to tie that in from the tip. And this wasn't the very tip. I cut it in half. It was a very long one. And if you have trouble with your peacock hurl or your stripped peacock hurl, you can just soak them in water and they will soften up. But this one should be good. It shouldn't break on me. Get that loose loop on there and then you can go ahead and tighten that up. And I can see that front taper isn't exactly great so I'll build that up a little bit more. This is 16 knot thread so it takes a real lot of uh, wraps. You can also put a rib on there if you want. I'm going to go ahead and put a rib on there and I'm going to use a copper wire. So I'm going to go back over it again but I'm going to start that way up here. There's, just, there's not enough copper there to sink this fly. And I'm going, I'm taking it to the opposite side or the far side there. And that way when I go to wrap it, I'm going to counter wrap it. And that will protect the peacock hurl from the teeth of the fish. I'm going to take my my peacock hurl, my stripped peacock hurl, and we're going to wrap that. I like to turn it so I can see where I'm working around the around the point of the hook. And you just want to butt them together. I got a yep, got a spot there. There we go. We'll try that again. That's much better. Don't pull too hard. Just hold it taut. Don't pull hard on it because you'll break it. And using the rotary vise is making pretty nice work of it. Let me back that off. Two. One, two. There we go. Just want to butt them together because the peacock curl really isn't wide enough to overlap and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this way up there and that just gives a little bit more security on the peacock hurl you can see it it went down the taper went back down in the front you can fold it back and then you can break it off now I'm going to counter wrap this like I said I'm going to try to get one under the tail, as long as it doesn't mess it up. Yep, and it was going to, so we're going to not do that. We're going to go right over. Nope. Yeah, that's the correct way. You want to go the opposite direction that you wrapped your peacock hurl. And you can bring that right up into the thorax also. You can tie these in, in any color combination, and these are really good. Like if I get some, if I run into some very selective picky trout, I'll put one of these on. Come on, there we go. This is extra fine copper wire, so it just breaks. Now I'm going to put a thorax in there. Bring that back to about one third back. On this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and use some light Cahill. They're they're big flies also, not tens. But what you got here is this is more or less the part representing a bit of a shuck there. And then we're then we'll see the then we'll see the thorax will give the distinction of what it is get that spread out there nicely and 
And this is super fine dubbing for dry flies. It resists the water. And we'll go ahead and make the thorax. And now I'm going to take that CDC feather, as soon as I find where I put it. Now when you go in to wrap a CDC feather, this is a 10, like I said, so making a dubbing loop isn't real necessary. But uh, if you're in the smaller ones, then you probably want to make put the CDC in the dubbing loop. If you go back in my playlist, in the material playlist, you can see how to make a dubbing loop or a dubbing block. And this is the dubbing block, and it's just simply a bunch of uh, sticky back foam stuck together, and then I cut a slot in it. You can see that. And what you would do is, first thing you would do is trim off that front. You trim off like maybe about that much of that front there so you have that and then you would put it on the put it on the dubbing block and then take your bodkin needle and push that stem down and I'll go ahead and do it on this one and when you push it down there you have that then you would take your dubbing loop Tool and make yourself a loop. I'll go ahead and finish this up in that fashion. And then I'm going to take my beeswax and wax that thread. Let, just let that hang. Now you got yourself a chip clip. This is about maybe an inch and a half. It's almost the same the same length as the dubbing block. So we're going to take this and we're going to put that in there. We're going to clip that CDC in there and then I squeeze it down here just because it doesn't hurt to squeeze it. And see if this was inside the clip that would give you a problem. Then we're going to trim that right close to the stem. And having these on the top, that's not a big deal because now they're like two different sizes there. And clip that. See what I'm talking about right there with that, that uh, tip that you have to get that tip off. Now I'm going to spread that dubbing loop. I'm going to put that chip clip right in there. And then I'm going to slide it off. And when I catch the edge of it, you take the clip off. Now if you have a weighted dubbing twister, you can go ahead and hold the thread here. And then twist that twister underneath. And then when you let it go, it spins or you can just let it hang and spin it but we're going to go ahead and wrap this and this CDC is going to float it kind of stroke them to the rear as you're going And actually on this on this particular fly right here I'm gonna put another hackle on there because I didn't get a, enough in my loop and I'll show you the other way to do it I'll tie that in you can go ahead and bring your thread back your loop back and go on top of it give it a little more security and then you can trim that off I'm just going to put a couple of wraps, but what you would do is tie the head. And then you can take your 
dubbing teaser and you probably grabbed some of the CDC underneath it probably wrapped over itself some and this is looking pretty good actually right now but I still want to get it a little bit heavier and you can see I, it's uh, getting pulled out don't catch your thread and now the other way you can do it is just take a CDC hackle and if your CDC stems are skinny you can do it this way without putting it in the dubbing loop because it won't take up much you can see how skinny that stem is compared to that was the stem I just cut off big fat one so if you have a skinny CDC stem you could go ahead and just do this I took it by the tip I'm gonna tie it in by the tip and that little piece right there I'm just gonna fold that back now I can take my hackle pliers and put my hackle pliers on that and now you can pull all of the hackle to one side as you're going you can pull that all to the rear as you're going and also the amount of CDC that you put on it's really your your choice you know you can make some heavy and you can make some lighter as per the water that you're going to be fishing okay I'm at the end there so I'm going to go ahead and give this a wrap keep that tight And then these extra ones right here, I'm going to just pull them back and kind of get them tied in. Fold that back, that stem back, and kind of make that head there a bit. Now oh, i got to get that stem out of there. And we can tie that head. take our whip finish take the hook and go over the thread put it around the camel hump and bring it back flip it invert it take that X slide it down to the shank and you could go three to six turns on your whip finish slide that out take your poke and snip and then you can go ahead and comb that out again but you should really make yourself some of these like I said for those really a lot of times this takes those really picky ones it seems like they're taken off the surface you can trim off those real long ones or break them off is even better that way you won't get them at a 90 degree they'll be staggered still we're going to take our head cement and put a dab of head cement on there all you need is a little you don't even have to go all the way around and here we have a light Cahill CDC flimp or a late light Cahill flimp hope that you learned something from this video hope that you would subscribe to my channel please refer me to your friends please visit my sponsors let them know that I sent you leave comments questions suggestions if you'd like to purchase any flies that I make go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym and if you don't see it there just send me a message and let me know what you're looking for and we'll figure things out and most of all thank you very much for watching my videos